So namaste everybody. Thank you everyone for joining us this evening. Uh, my name is Siddharth and uh, I've been the one um, uh, calling and bugging every one of you to join us for this webinar uh, this evening. So uh, just a brief description, the introduction about Climate Risk and Finance Council uh, for those who are uh, new to this. So climate change brings forth a multitude of risks and opportunities for businesses. And climate change is going to force businesses uh, to adapt, uh, businesses and investors to adapt to this changing environment. So they will be interested to manage these, this new variety of risk or rather this old variety of risk that has become systemic, which is climate risk and how to uh, manage uh, the upcoming opportunities based uh, because of this climate risk. So these opportunities and to understand the lay of the land and to understand the climate risk and to identify these variety of opportunities that um, the climate risk throws at us. A variety of systems would have to be implemented, starting with understanding what, what is the current status of a company's or a business's climate related uh, exposure, the kind of reporting standards it has to follow, and the kind of regulatory requirements and regulatory compliances that it has to satisfy. So to understand all of this, to simplify these complex systems, Climate Risk and Finance Council aims to demystify a lot of these concepts to our uh, members and to the wider uh, uh, audience here. Our objective here is to better understand, better monitor, simplify and better manage uh, climate risk and therefore utilize and channelize climate finance to help create a more equitable and a more climate just world. So our mission uh, in this uh, organization, our mission with this group is, first of all, to provide some thought leadership in perceiving and understanding climate risk and its impact on financial institutions. Then to compile and develop resources for climate change mitigation and adaptation for banking and insurance and variety of investors. And finally, to as we progress, as we evolve, to develop the philosophical foundations and to implement practical tools for climate related financial uh, risk management and financial, uh, for financial institutions. So having given a brief background about climate risk, what we have been doing since last uh, Last, since last year is conduct weekend webinars. Uh, a variety, we invite a variety of specialists and experts to talk to us um, on, and explain to our audience the, the lay of the land as far as the climate risk is concerned and to give some food for thought for practitioners in the, uh, in the investment, in the investor, in the banking and the investor uh, sectors. So this, this weekend, this um, uh, seminar today, this webinar today will is conducted by uh, Mr. R.K. Anand. So R.K. Anand, sir, is also a member of the Climate Risk and Finance Council. He has over 35 years of experience uh, in a variety of roles in the banking industry. Uh, largely, he has been part of the, um, uh, he has been part of the banking industry as a risk analyst, chief economist, and advisor and consultant for mergers and acquisitions. Um, for now, um, Anand sir is also is a, is a mentor, is a teacher um, in variety of management schools uh, directed towards uh, strategic planning and management of businesses. Uh, largely, again, related with the uh, with risk management from a banking banker's point of view. And today he is going to be talking about integrating uh, ESG in sustainable banking practices. So the, the, his lecture would be about 30, 35 odd minutes. And then we will open uh, maybe 10, 15 minutes for uh, question and answers uh, with, the, with, the, uh, with the audience then. So um, having given that brief uh, introduction uh, about CRFC and uh, about the speaker today, I'll now ask uh, Anand sir to kindly start with his, uh, uh, with his uh, lecture today. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Siddharth and CRFC for this opportunity to be in touch with the very much interested audience and a very emerging and happening subject like this. What I'll do is that uh, I'll be making a 
brief uh, of the topic since the topic is uh, very wide as everyone understands and uh, we'll try to remain focused on the topic of the day and bring just a try that the contents of the topic are delivered in a applied manner based upon the hands-on work we have done in this field and as the CRFC is setting up its vision on the way forward that how the subject is going to evolve. So if in the process we get an exchange of the ideas with the participants and the mutual sharing of the this uh, information with each other, I think CRFC will be glad to put in that on uh, the, you know, already the work which is being done on this uh, subject of uh, the climate risk. Now, the topic of the day is uh, integrated ESG and sustainable banking. Here, I have just put up a structured, very brief uh, uh, you know, uh, presentation also for to remain structured on the topic. And I would begin by bringing in a vision uh, for sharing with the participants that the subject like banking is very well established, very well regulated business worldwide, and a structured regulatory as well as the practical system has evolved in the banking. And the risk management part of that is very well being pursued under the parcel risk management framework. So this is the financial side. Now the integration with ESG, that is environment, the social, angle or the society or the governance. Try to understand that this is the integration we are envisioning from a non-financial field, that is ESG. Its integration with the financial topic, banking, to make the banking sustainable. So in a way, with the present awareness of the climate risk and the other important aspects of the responsibility towards society and the need for a good governance brings this adjective sustainable to bring change in the banking so that the ESG gets embedded into the banking and we go hand in hand integrated model of ESG embedded banking which of course will remain sustainable. Without that, we'll come to know that it cannot happen, that you know, the, we ignore the ESG side and then we say that, okay, we think that we'll be sustainable. As this CRFC uh, introduction has already been given by my colleague, here we see this sustainable banking integration with ESG to make the banking more safer and more sound going ahead. Now, the banking has to be responsible in order to give way to ESG into its framework. The two things can't go isolated now that is very well appreciated in the BFSI parlance. And this ESG by coming, uh, you know, this acronym, a combo, a trinity of three, environment, social concern, and the governance. So now the future of the banking is that it has to be principally based upon the principles to be responsible. So United Nations has uh, started 
working on it and it in fact the climate the e world environment start getting into prominence from the paris agreement 2015 onwards the term responsible banking if we use it envisages that the esg gets integrated into the banking function so we are looking at to set up a unique framework for ensuring that the signatory banks strategy and practice along with the vision society has set for its future in the sustainable development goals and the paris climate agreement so these two are the structured things the set of 17 interlinked goals under the sdg which now gets structured into the esg under the various parameters and the climate starting from this awareness and appreciation from the paris agreement to the current cop 27 so the six principles get set in 2019 by understanding between the founding banks and the united nations the uh, the banks sit together with the united nations on this and they set up the six principles across all business areas at strategic portfolio and transaction level and in the process at the end to see that how the things go a structure is getting evolved to see its embedding into the banking sector that it the, the three steps means an impact analysis can be conducted to identify the most significant impacts of on the products and services of the societies economies and environment that the banks operate in target setting can be done for achieving the measurable targets in banking area and a reporting system disclosures is getting evolved under various uh, regulatory practices we will be talking of this so this is the you know practice going forward for this sustainable journey and uh, the principles six principles basically for this integration of esg into the banking principle one alignment that the business strategy gets aligned to the society and individuals need and then principle two it sets up the impact and the measurable target setting to gauge the progress on the alignment and then the principle 3 that we work responsibly in this spirit of principle 1 and 2 with our clients and our customers to encourage sustainable practices and principle 4 stakeholders that proactively and responsibly consult engage and partners with relevant stakeholders to achieve these society goals and the principle 5 on the element g that we implement our commitments to these principles through effective governance and a culture of responsible banking which is reflective and very transparent for the stakeholders to judge us the principle 6 straightway talks on the transparency and accountability of the financial institutions so here we go and then various you know structured forums or the systems are getting evolved into this like the this task force for the climate related financial disclosures brings a set of the disclosures which broadly can be you know got divided into the four sub parameters subsections governance strategy risk management metrics and targets and accordingly the disclosures are getting evolved on that we will be today concentrating more on the integration of the esg so this is just to build up the background that whatever we will be talking or we are doing 
is getting structured into the disclosures also. So other day in other webinars, we are talking on this. And the climate risk, which is captured into E, the first of the Trinity ESG, is very well now structurally made clear to the BFSI that two sets of risks are emanating upon them and there is a need to manage them and to safe, safeguard the BFSI from getting these risks devolved upon the banks. Physical risks and the transitionary risks. So these are the two state way, structured way in every paper you will find every subject is going like that. The extreme weather events and gradual changes in climate, whatever physically their changes, they are being brought to the BFSI. And the BFSI is working out this uh, to deal with this business disruption, asset destruction, migration, reconstruction. All this is demanding funds, capital. So this is the physical risk. Then, Going further, the transitory requirement of the capital, the BFSI has to bring forward in compliance of this E is being worked out that, you know, not only the transitory needs, but also the market losses, the credit losses, the underwriting losses, the operational risk on the way are being perceived and the work is going on the quantification. So this is again the just a description we used in other day in our webinars. That all this is going to set an impact on the financial sector, the financial institutions, and the financial statements getting changed. The income statement, the cash flow statement, the balance sheets of the BFSI. So the, this uh, Morgan Stanley talks of uh, this uh, the, the, is study by them that the regulatory interests now going forward in the subject is bringing an environment in their latest report they have come out that the need for the classification and the disclosure obligations are ramping up too fast globally. And this is spurred by the EU's SFDR, that is Sustainable Finance Disclosure Regulations, which imposes a requirement on more transparent reporting of ESG funds. So things are getting structured and very much concrete. Nothing is being talked in air. 2023 that the current year which has set in is setting up an agenda in changes in ESG fund unfolding disclosure regimes which hold the managers to very stricter accountability. Australia, Hong Kong, Singapore, there are the you know countries to be quoted to have provided guidance to standardize the disclosures on integration of ESG. Regulators in European Union, Canada have gone further by seeking to classify sustainable funds with more extensive ESG integration. The US has taken tentative steps in which they have brought in a aspect that they see that about 8% of their global fund assets are going to have an oversight of ESG before the investment. Now, for investors, this could mean a better informed decisions going forward. And is ESG getting the prominence and getting embedded into, integrated into the BFSI. So a positive environment is getting set, is getting decoded, demystified, and being put in the black and white in three sections, that is the environmental aspect of the finance, the social aspect, the governance aspect. 
So all these three non-financial things, E, S, and G, are getting quantified and being given a number that is data. Because the complexity of the current way forward for the BFSI is being dealt by analyticals, analytics, data analytics, and data is the language to be used to decipher that what is going to be in the future, the impact on the BFSI, what in terms of data is required to say set aside to meet this risk. And at the end, what is the data we generate after this integrating the data on ESG into the financial data of the banking to work out a return on the capital, which is the ESG risk adjusted return on the capital. So that is how this non-financial thing is getting integrated into financial world. The terms now gets more meaning. Responsible banking is the term to say integrated one word for the ESG and the sustainable banking integration. So this is a unique framework, we should say, for ensuring that the signatory banks strategy and practice aligned with the vision society has set out for its future in SDG and Paris Climate Agreement. As we said in the beginning, we have brought here to prove that this term responsible banking is the term helping us to fulfill that integration. Reserve Bank of India, the example of the regulator in India, like worldwide, we have named the regulator in the two slides back, the you know, Europe, US, and the Australia, etc. Here they also have you know conducted a climate-related survey in India and uh, the climate risk and sustainable finance. Key learnings for the Indian regulator for setting up the way forward for the banks for integration of this E, S, G into the banking structure is the first top priority to begin from the top. It is you know, a point to be marked, flagged, that the things in banking sector starts and flow from the top to bottom. So first of all, that this has to begin at the governance level. That means the very responsible and very sensitive boards in the scaling of the initiatives relating to climate risk and sustainability. And they could consider, you know, including the key performance indicators on climate risk, sustainability, and ESG as a part of performance evaluation of their top management. Now, when we were practicing in the banking sector, it's a so pertinent a field that the remuneration of the, you know, the directors or the board gets decided on compliance and scoring of marks under this. So it starts from there. Then the risk management, the present structure of the risk management needs to be the grasp now, the clearly grasp, the physical, transition and liability risks associated with climate risk and actively start managing them to make their loan and investment portfolio more resilient. So other day we were talking of the you know, deployment side that the deployment is asset. You, if you create the assets which are loan or investment and they are the foolproof from the you know, the environmental risk and the so social and the governance, uh, some laxity there, if you prove that you are creating those assets, then only your liabilities will, that means the resource raising will support you. So banks need to develop a strategy for managing climate risk and integrating with risk management framework. So this is how this non-financial field is getting 
integrated into the financial fields. Then a set of the disclosures, climate related financial disclosures, which are getting structured. And each and every bank has to be signatory to this. Non signatories get weeded out of the systems because the, you know, the stakeholders do not admire and you know, deal with them as the related banks. And then the next key learning, which is brought by the Indian regulator, is the opportunities from transition to a green future. So banks could consider now mobilizing a new capital to scale up green lending and investment, or set a target for incremental lending and investment for the sustainable finance. And this is how now, say, a just unimaginable billions of the dollars of the new business is getting created for the banks where the funding for the decarbonizing, less carbonizing, or the green assets, or the things like the transport sector itself, if we take, opens up a huge opportunity by the financing of the fuels other than the fossil fuels electric vehicles and the you know the solar or the other things like that not renewable resources then the social angle the hr and the capacity building things to be seen in the bfsi and the investor evaluates them before putting in his money that the banks will require dedicated resources in this area to successfully tap the opportunities. Now, it's a move towards the low carbon environment in banking operations. So banks could come out with a strategy to reduce emissions from their own operations. So how green work you are doing, how paperless work you are doing. So you banks have to come out with the timelines for them on the net zero emissions. Now, when we talk of the integration of uh, say ESG and SF, this is the vision emerging, a tree, a visionary tree emerging in the Indian regulator's mind, where all this is in getting integrated into one tree the green finance, carbon emission, climate related risk, transition risk, physical risk, ESG strategy, the existing risk management framework, TCFD framework, the ICAP assessment, already the Basel thing, which is in the progress. So all this sets up a one tree approach for the BFS and climate risk as a part of the risk management framework. And the ESG as a strategy that it supports this concept and, you know, comes out with the disclosures and the presentation before the society in giving a you know, concrete quarterly proofs by quarter by quarter that the banks are on the achievement of the measurable goals of the integration thereof. Now, going forward, we just set up a fusion of this or integration of ESG and banks in the existing risk management framework in the banking. What is clearly perceived here in the banking that the functions of compliance, disclosures, risk management, and the business plan are getting set in a direction that the each one is embedded into an integrated approach that if, for example, to put it in a simple word, or a just ground level thing for a common layman or a just a non-banker to understand that if a bank gives a call that here is a business plan where in the bank assigns the positive rating, positive treatment, or a low risk 
price loading on a sector like which is low carbon emitting sector or say which is a sector where this uh, you know carbonization is not going to happen so initially in the business plan the policy favors more allocation of funds more creation of such assets for that bank and it goes to the investor's eye and the investor rates the bank see the environmental score esg is a scoring framework in which the environment parameters social parameters the governance parameters they get scored at a score one common score is evolved and if a bank scores 70 or more into that you know out of 100 the scale is thought good so you will prefer 93 against the 82 and you will prefer 82 against the 78 so from the understanding of this concept of esg mapping it putting it under a policy looking at the probable points of entry into the financial of the financial institution the quantification thereof working out the measurable probabilities and the exposures of the banks at that we just bring it a formal this risk management structure or a banking structure embedded with the esg and the risk management and we just move towards something like this that the going forward the integration which is seen has started happening at the at least there are some banks pointed out in the survey by the regulator of india that those who are appreciated of this embedding of esg into the you know basel risk management framework for the sustainable banking in india and the worldwide the same thing is happening in other countries that the esg parameters which are clear now the environment social and governance which we have talked into the previous slide and given a brief description of the three subsets of the parameters each scored for its significance is dovetailed fused with the basel risk management framework which sets up the three pillars that is the minimum capital requirement the supervisory aspect and the discipline and the disclosures so this esg parameters get are the non financial things they get set into the three pillars the s and g they sit in the second and the third pillar and e gets partly fit into the pillar 1 and uh, the part of it goes to the pillar 2 also of the basel so this is how the existing risk management framework of the banking is now opening its gate to get integrated esg and the esg embedded alm is in the evolvement now what is this the asset liability management we do in the banking we look at two aspects that we are matching the remaining maturities of our assets and liabilities and we are matching the you know the cost and revenues to end up with a positive net interest margin for us now bringing in esg parameters into the financial alm the non financial impacts of the environment on that and then working out the remaining maturities of the assets and the liabilities and the cost and the returns thereon we get an embedded alm in the existing structure which talks of the financial as well as non financial factors the i just use this non financial thing to be a replica of esg into the already financial structured statements of the banks so what we will be trying in banking the those who are bankers in the today's uh, meet is uh, very well understand that we work out the you know the risk weights for the assets so these risk weights are so far the riskiness in terms of the financial terms 
So the ESG score gives a, another element to be added to the risk weights and then redefine and rewrite the risk weights for the assets depending upon its, uh, you know, the impact on the environment, the, the society and the governance aspect thereof. So what we get, we get a new set of the probability of default, a new set of the exposure at default, a new set of the loss given default, and then these maturities, the remaining maturities now get redefined in the light of the life of the assets and the, you know, the uh, maturities to be available as, to be available to us in the funds on a dynamic basis so that you know we work out a, a revised set of the parameters for which we you know we use these parameters for working out the expected losses to an extent by putting in this esg embedding into the uh, you know existing financial structure what we are trying to do is we are going to achieve a wonderful thing which we imagine you know sometime in banking very difficult that expected losses we work out based upon these numbers and we set aside the provisions thereof now with this non financial thing getting decoded or demystified the esg to an extent the unexpected risks also get to the fore and we will be in a position to set aside uh, clear some more realistic capital for beating that part and a revised you know, framework of the risk adjusted return on capital, which can be called that the ESG embedded or the ESG priced returns on the you know, adjusted return on the capital can be worked out. So at last, the a combined discipline and the disclosure framework of the environment, social and governance parameters, very well integrated into the banking risk management framework of the Basel gets set and we end up in, you know, a, bid towards the gradual integration of this uh, the non-financial parameters of ESG into the financial parameters. With all this design and all this uh, structure into the mind and the way is seen by the bankers and the practitioners in this regard, like the CRFC, many other organizations are humbly putting their efforts to understand this integration and the implementation of this ESG and the risk management framework for the banks. We see that the path is long, lot of work, research-based work has to happen in identifying the nodes of the ESG which will enter into the riskiness into the banking and then to make it sustainable what quantification will be required to be done is the present stage where the banking is there and trying to find out although in a thumb rule manner as a proactive measure for the integration of this ESG and banking Already the policy changes are happening in the banking sector, wherein the, you know, the positive and the negative flags are being wrecked based upon the carbonization and the ESG negativity or the positivity of the asset classes. And banks have started doing a risk um, management based upon the, this, the negativity or the positivity seen in the sectors but its quantification has to happen which is a way forward like we have evolved into the Basel 1, 2 and 3. The Basel 4 strategy paper talks of integrating this climate risk and the digital currency risk into the coming framework. So this ESG parameter infusion into the uh, banking sector to make it sustainable is seen now a subject uh, which is being dealt 
and we see the light at the other end of the tunnel, but yes, we have to cross this tunnel. So here I rest and stop and leave this uh, with the floor open to the candidates or you know my colleagues that if some interaction happens or anybody wants to share his view, welcome please for your questions. Okay, so thank you so much for that answer. And um, I will let the uh, floor open for question and answers. But before that, we'll just conduct one small poll to understand uh, whether the audiences, bankers, and their organizations here um, uh, have they started implementing ESG integration. So, uh, Sridham, if you could kindly uh, set that poll, please. Poll question on. Yes, I have set it on. Yes. Uh, is the poll visible on everyone's screen? You can you can unmute yourself and uh, inform us, please. No, it is no. not. It's not, is it? Okay. Just yes, one moment. Yes. Yeah, we could see it. We can't see. We can't, right? That's what I'm saying. Okay, just one moment. Okay, meanwhile, we can allow others to ask questions. Yeah. Right? Yes. If you can kindly ask questions, please. Okay. Um, maybe perhaps if I could start uh, with the questions uh, myself here. So, uh, sir, if I understand as the um, if I understand this correctly, I'm not from the banking uh, industry space. I'm largely from the sustainable side of things. So if I were to look at this um, ESG integration with the banks, uh, I understand it to be some kind of a rating system that can be, uh, the, the analogy that I would say is uh, someone like in India, at least you could have crystal rating or uh, or Moody's rating or Fitch rating. So if those are the kind of ratings that we see from the credit rating side, uh, are you saying that we would have ESG rating on similar lines? And if so, uh, how, how reliable then can these ratings be if they are from very different uh, rating agencies then? Yeah, uh, Siddharth, the rating agent, uh, system has started evolving on the ESG parameters also. And a score has been generated, which is now, you know, a practiced globally. So far, the issue is that the, the correctness, the authenticity, the credibility of this score, you know, it gets challenged region to region depending upon the regulatory, you know, strictness, the concern about that and the, you know, the concern for greenwashing and all that. But yes, definitely a scoring system has started evolving upon that. And not only the rating agencies are looking for a business into it, the consultants, the investment consultants, the investment uh, Companies itself, they are looking a big business. This meeting is being recorded. Like I said, MSCI, the Morgan Stanley, this capital investment. Now, all these are the bids to have a score on the ESG and blending of this score into the score we generate on evaluation of a bank based upon the rating system of the banks. So these two numbers getting dovetailed into one is a big achievement that we are able to now quantify non-financial things like ESG into the quantified number and then come out with some a combined score telling you about a financial institutions that how far it has gone in implementation of this ESG into its business. So yes, the uh, very sincere efforts are there. And I mentioned in my talk that is ESG score 70 plus 
is regarded as a, you know, the institution appreciating the ESG factor. So there are parameters and getting scored quantified over that. Going forward, the each country regulator will set its best practices and like, you know, the global best practices get the best rating system. That is the way we will follow, I think. Okay, thank you. Thanks for that answer. Welcome. So if I may ask for an interactive thing, if there are other members uh, over here who would want to contribute, if I were to ask, uh, have your banks uh, kind of introduced or integrated ESG in its operations, in its process? I mean, if you could answer with, uh, let's say, a, a raise of hand, perhaps, or with some reaction, which is to say, uh, a thumbs up to say that it has done, or maybe a raised hand to say it has not, perhaps. Now, how many of us I mean, have your banks implemented any of these ESG integrate methods in its operations? Uh, I'm not aware of it, Kashyap, at least, if I talk about my bank. Okay. I mean, in terms of majors, I don't see. They, I keep seeing the news uh, in our local uh, newsroom that something awareness, etc. But in terms of major, I haven't seen anything that I could say yes. Okay. See, in Indian banks, still banks are implementing, not fully implemented. It is under this process. It is, they are implementing step by slowly. And then if you see some recruitments also, means banks are recruiting some ESG, ESG specialists from, uh, from external agencies and they are rec re recruiting uh, ESG specialists for risk management. So okay. it is under implementation stage, yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right now, the framework is under preparation and various banks, as per the you know exposure norms, are implementing it through the rating agencies. The rating agencies in India have done far more than the banks themselves in incorporating and in indoctrinating this concept of ESG in the rating rationale. Mm -hmm. Banks are still you know, under the process. In fact, uh, RBI also has done an inspection of 12 large banks in India and found that uh, most of the banks are still not fully compliant on ESG implementation. And some of them have employed the requisite staff to oversee and implement this. Others are still recruiting. So it might be by 2025, probably okay. that most of the banks in India will be compliant on this. That's right. right. And there, I believe there are, uh, so if I were to ask in that sense, whatever I understand about ESG is that the environmental aspect of it has much more objective parameters um, that that any anyone who is comfortable with quantifying, uh, quantifying such things is more comfortable with. How comfortable are banks uh, with respect to uh, some subjective parameters such as the social um, social and the governance part of ESG? I understand the answers to most of that is, I mean, the parameters that the, the parameters are largely qualitative in 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 character, and therefore it might be difficult to quantify it. So, what is the view from the industry on that? See, the parameters like uh, social are also being tried to get quantified by way of the HR practices for the internal uh, manpower, like the gender treatment or the diversity a bank is practicing or its response to the society while devising the products and the, you know, the execution of the business. So parameterization is there and uh, you are right in saying that these things are uh, more, they go more toward the subjectivity, but things are being done on a minimum basis to evolve some objectivity. The parameterization is being done on these. So as you will go through the set of the numbers I indicated in S, that is the set, the scoring for the social angle, some of the things are taken out of the practice of the bank and they get quantified. 
So that way it is there. And the governance aspect is already being, you know, the uh, compliances shown by the bank to the regulator or the discipline demonstrated by them or the disclosures done by them, that, that also getting quantified. So things are happening on the ground so far in the absence of a common standard regulatory formula the different banks are adopting different practices, but they are into the direction of the implementation of ESG. The environmental concerns are getting quantified by way of risk pricing of the assets they create. Okay. You know, today you go for finance, getting financed a EV plant or you go for getting financed a thermal plant. You, the risk pricing there itself will tell you the difference. Yes, uh, that's right. I mean, the environmental aspect is more objective there. So yeah. that, therefore, that seems to be more comfortable right. to, to, to price it. Right. So, the, but my concern is a bit more on the, on the side which are more subjective. For example, uh, when we have technical ratings, technical ratings can be largely uh, you know, uniform across the world. But when it comes to more subjective parts such as uh, the social part as well as the governance part that is uh, that is that must be cultural specific right that is country specific culture specific and uh, therefore not one kind of quantifying mechanism can be applicable across the countries across all cultures right so how are these crediting or how are these um, how are these kind of questions addressed and how are these kind of questions looked at uh, by, the, by the banking industry and by the especially by the credit uh, ESG rating industries, if they if it is being integrated with the banking processes. See, this will again goes towards the rule based marking of the practices a bank is doing on a particular aspect, on the uh, non financial field of the social angle or the things like governance. So very, you know, the subjective to minimize the subjectivity, a rule-based system is getting evolved on each. And a very lengthy parameterization is there being practiced by these consultants and the RBI also into their uh, now going forward, their implementation of this sustainable finance. I, we can say that a good sort of the degree of the concern and consciousness is getting developed by the appreciation of the concept and the best practices in the field will get evolved a system which will be more objective Achha, okay going forward good system Kannan, your point was extremely valid uh, as far as conditions in india are concerned because out of six lakhs villages we still have more than 25 percent villages without electricity on one side on the other side, the energy intensive industries are guzzling power day in, day out, and uh, you know, exuding carbon. So, to arrive at a balanced situation for banks, it's very cumbersome. We are still financing old design diesel run generators in rural areas, entire three and four. And we are asking the bigger units to go for better quality transformers and generators uh, to stop using the diesel uh, generators in um, cities. So there, there is a you know quandary a situation of uh, balancing the evolving India and the evolved India. So as you said, the matter is highly subjective, and banks have yeah. uh, to really work very hard to find a balance. Yeah, and, and one thing, I think nothing will change drastically because, you know, all this green technologies, everything is so expensive. So businesses cannot just shift right away. And also, I don't know what kind of government I and mean, policies government can bring, but what kind of support system they, they bring after that so the businesses can implement it successfully and it can be a success story. Otherwise, it will be like, uh, because it will always be... Uh, measured against what is the bottom line they are getting out of it right i mean of course policy can enforce it but it's a it's not a lot complicated than just saying implement it right 
אוקיי. well if there is uh, any further questions we will take it otherwise i think uh, we'll proceed with the uh, word of thanks for this okay so i i think i'll take that as proceed with the word of thanks so again uh, so thank you everybody for joining us thank you anand sir for taking this uh, uh, taking this session and for giving us some insights on on the integration of esg and with sustainable banking practices and uh, thank you for um, for uh, the interactive session afterwards as well thank you everybody to all the members so uh, i understand uh, just as a as a as a point of uh, reminder so next week we would have uh, ms faust uh, for uh, giving us a webinar on again esg practices from the industry and we hope to have you all again visit us uh, in during that webinar and if you could kindly also share uh, these uh, invites and links in your networks in your social media networks uh, on linkedin instagram twitter youtube perhaps if you could do that we might have a bit more uh, uh, what you would say more interactive session more thoughts and views shared with uh, with the rest of the team and that would be more more useful most more uh, in informative for everybody here so i request all of the members to kindly uh, assist us in, the, in that um, to cooperate and support us with that and uh, hopefully we can do a much bigger uh, host with bigger audiences with that so again thank you everybody for joining and uh, i wish you a pleasant uh, evening and a pleasant day forward thank you again